Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Ross Rifle Mark III in Battlefield 5. This is a weapon that was actually my favorite sniper rifle in Battlefield 1. So how does it stack up in Battlefield 5? Bolt action technology didn't really evolve too considerably between World War I and World War II, so many of the same weapons were used between both wars, hence the Ross Rifle Mark III, which is essentially an evolved Enfield rifle produced in Canada. Now, first things first, this rifle is available to anyone who completes the current weekly assignments for the Tides of War. Eventually, I'm sure it will be available for company coin as well, but if you wanna get it for free and complete some relatively easy assignments, I'd recommend doing the Tides of War challenges. It took me a little bit over an hour, and once you get to the last final assignments, I recommend going for the uh, capture point requirements. You can play Domination, capture two points in one life pretty easy, and then the assignment after that is to just capture six points. You can do all of that in one round of Domination very, very quickly, which I recommend doing to save time if you just wanna get the Ross rifle as fast as possible. When it comes to specializing this rifle, I went predominantly left side tree. The last uh, specializations on these trees, in my opinion, don't matter too much. I don't use the zeroing functionality and I don't use bayonets for bayonet charges, uh, but that's up to personal preference. The left side gives me faster aiming down sight time and better mobility while I'm aiming down sight and moving, which really helps out in sniper duels. Now it has a very fast rate of fire that it's actually only beat out by the Lee Enfield. You can increase its rate of fire if you take the right side progression tree, but I decided not to. I actually don't need quite as fast a rate of fire as this gun is capable of producing. Now, if you were to base this gun's performance off of the in-game stat bars, you would notice that it's virtually identical to the Lee Enfield. In fact, in many ways, it's worse than the Lee Enfield because the Lee Enfield has a larger magazine capacity, starts with a few more rounds of ammunition, and has a higher rate of fire by default. And this is picking the exact same specializations for both weapons. Unfortunately, in-game stats give you a very narrow perspective of weapon performance, especially when it comes to bolt action rifles as they give you pretty much none of the important stats for said rifles. Reload speed is a very important stat for bolt action rifles, as is damage drop off at range and muzzle velocity. These are some of the most important stats for a bolt action rifle, and they just don't exist in game, which really sucks because some of that actually was in Battlefield 1. They had a good damage drop off chart showing you sweet spots and stuff like that. Uh, Battlefield 5 doesn't give you any of that. So I did a bit of in-game testing. Uh, this weapon and the infield seem to have virtually identical reload speeds. I mean, there might be a slight difference there, but from just looking at it with my eyeball, putting the footage next to each other, it looks pretty much on par. Uh, when it comes to muzzle velocity, it does look like the Ross rifle has significantly faster muzzle velocity than the Enfield. 600 meters per second to the Enfield's 500 meters per second, I believe. The Enfield is a hard rifle to use at medium and medium long ranges because the muzzle velocity is slow enough that you have to get used to leading considerably further than most other bolt action rifles. The Ross rifle seems to have a very fast travel time, so you won't have to lead quite as much. The in-game damage drops off to 55 for a body shot at range, which isn't particularly high. Uh, I believe that's identical to the Enfield. I don't know if the drop-off time is the exact same as the Enfield, though. If you compare it to like an M95, which hits for in the high 60s at range, that, that definitely packs a bit more punch and will be slightly more forgiving for body shots, especially if your opponents have a little bit of damage done to them. Uh, you have a much higher chance of getting a one-shot kill with a body shot with the M95. So if I were to characterize the Ross Mark III, I would say it's an aggressive but also precision rifle. So it's got a fast rate of fire. It doesn't do high body shot damage, which puts an emphasis on getting headshots. The fast rate of fire means that you could potentially engage quickly 
in close quarter combat if you needed to, but you do have a faster muzzle velocity. So it gives you the ability to extend that range and hit moving targets a little bit more consistently at further ranges. The problem of course, is that you're gonna have to hit those moving targets either in the head or twice with a body shot, uh, basically every time, cause you have low body shot damage. So it's an interesting rifle. I do like it a lot. It, it looks cool. I like the Ross from Battlefield 1. It's got that cool nostalgia going for it. And uh, I think I like it better than the Enfield. It's hard to say because the Enfield does have 10 rounds and a faster rate of fire, which makes it objectively better as a aggressive sniper rifle, a close quarter, the aggressive recon uh, weapon of choice. The problem is that aggressive recon is very hard to play in Battlefield 5. I don't think DICE has done a particularly good job of balancing the recon class to make it fun for multiple play styles really i think you really just have to use them as more sneaky beaky long range you can be aggressive and it looks awesome in clips but really if you're trying to take a point and capture an objective recon is not the class you want to be playing with even if you are the god of recons you know so the infield is fun and cool and it is objectively the best aggressive recon rifle this one just gives you a little bit more versatility it says hey you can be aggressive with this if you want you've got a good rate of fire with it one of the best out of all the bolt action rifles but it's also got that fast muzzle velocity so if you can aim for the head you can take out targets at medium and long range quickly and deliberately and that's nice because tracking with the Enfield on moving targets takes a while to get used to and it actually threw me off a bit coming back to this weapon because I wasn't sure if I had to lead in front or behind my targets for a bit I was like is this rifle just does it have a really slow muzzle velocity no it's got really fast I was leading way too far with most of my targets. So once I started to figure it out and get the lead time on right I got more effective with this gun. Now, is this rifle essential to Battlefield 5? Is it creating uh, unique engagement properties that no other rifle offers in Battlefield 5? Kind of, but it's one of those things where it's like, if you like the M95, you like the Lee Field, you'll be happy with either of those rifles. This one just kind of splits the difference a little bit, it gives you a slightly more finessed weapon and that's great you know that's actually fine the unfortunate thing is that the in-game weapon stats really don't communicate this well at all like literally if you look at in-game weapon stats it just says the infield is better because it has a higher rate of fire and a larger magazine and this ross mark 3 offers literally nothing over it so you just shouldn't use the ross mark 3 according to the in-game stats which is stupid. It's like, why have the stats there, Dice, if you're only gonna paint half the picture? Uh, as I talked about earlier, you need muzzle velocity, you need reload speeds, you need other properties in there to give people a better, clearer picture, especially with damage drop off and stuff. These are really important stats for sniper rifles and not having them in the game uh, is nonsensical and it paints a misleading picture essentially you're creating false uh, imagery of your weapon based on the in-game stat charts and I think it sucks that the weapon stats in battlefield games have been crappy for so long it felt like maybe in battlefield when they were starting to turn it up a little bit giving us sort of a damage drop off chart and stuff was kind of cool but it's gone in battlefield 5 so it's like one step forward one step back I don't know if DICE is ever going to give us proper weapon stat readouts, but lots of first person shooters do that nowadays. Uh, shooters where they want players to take them a bit more seriously, look at the stats of guns, analyze them a bit better. If you don't care, you don't have to look at them. But the fact that DICE is still using those stat bars that have no numbers behind them and just says, this one does high damage, you know, and like gives you no technical readout or way for you to quantify that in any way kind of sucks because there is a lot of data and values to this game that are important for picking weapons and deciding your loadout and picking combat tactics and whatnot so I hope at some point DICE can implement that in the game I almost feel foolish asking for it in Battlefield 5 because the list of things that I want fixed or added to this game are like 500 things long and weapon stats is you know item number 400 so I'd rather have 400 other things added to the game prior to that, but it's not to say that this isn't something that the franchise could certainly use.
Anyway, if you're a fan of sniping or you just want to unlock all the guns in the game, the Ross Rifle Mark III is available today and it's available for a week using the in-game assignments and will most likely be available later for company coin. So if you don't want to spend the company coin on unlocking this rifle and you want to do some assignments that'll take you a little over an hour to complete, then go for it. You got one week. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this rifle review video. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.